The immediate past president general of Wuhan is Indigo Chief Nian Ngodo has warned that Nigeria might run into a constitutional crisis if it fails to restructure before the 2023 general election, as some sections of the country might boycott the polls as a result of the growing dissatisfaction in the land. Now, the former minister of, for information insisted that Nigeria must restructure to give its component units sovereignty over its natural resources, provided they pay some form of taxation to the federal government to maintain federal responsibilities. He also noted that domestic security must remain in the hands of the federating units. The former aviation minister warned that Nigeria's disintegration was not likely uh, or unlikely if the conditions given were not met. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dr. Sonny Maduka and Dakbo Daramola. Both are political analysts. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Maduka and Thank you. All right. Um, if you can hear me, I'm going to start with um, Dr. Maduka. We always hear about the issue of restructuring, you know, every time it's pre-election season. And, and so it makes me really curious. Is the restructuring slogan or the restructuring conversation now a, a political tool, a way to get votes? Or is it really a conversation worth having? Wait. Dr. Madika, can you hear me? All right, let's uh, try our other guest. Um, can you hear me, gentlemen? I can hear you now. Okay, go ahead. Okay. You, you want me to speak? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, 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 <laughs> what we're having in this country is um, we we started on a, a, a wrong footing. Uh, if you look at the instrument of uh, this uh, country's evolution, you discover that uh, there was a document signed and sealed sorry do you have your television How, on you, you need to turn off your television or turn off the volume because we can hear feedback no uh, okay okay uh, it's off it's off okay it's off okay so what so what i'm saying the instrument of um our independence there was an instrument there was a document and that document was signed and it gave rise to three regions before it now made that four regions so that was the basis of our existence. Uh, although the war came and uh, messed up the whole thing. But the military has no right to start knifing us like Gowan did and created 12 states just on a fierce issue. And then other military junta started, you know, creating states. There was no impute from the civilians. So what we saw was just impunity by the ministry. And there's no way you can start like that. Now, coming to the basis of this discussion, APC manifesto was clear. In 2024, their number one manifesto was that they are going to restructure this country. And it was even based on that, that Nigerians trooped out and voted them in. And unfortunately, they created or they formed a committee headed by Erufai. Erufai did a work and presented to the president. As at now, that report is lying fallow. And of course, as gullible as we are, when they came in 2019, they say, ah, in this second next level, they're going to make it known. But unfortunately, we have just one year plus. That means that that report will not see the light of the day. Uh, the problem we have is just as stated by the former minister. If we don't do something right now, it's going to be very hard. For once in my lifetime, Sokoto, that is a caliphate of Muslims, where you can never see anything talked about, uh, uh, anything called violence, is now being almost run over by bandits. That is to tell you there's a problem. 
And except we are just trying to lie to ourselves, that's a serious foundation, uh, foundational problem. Look at it from this way. Our constitution, the first paragraph says we Nigeria. Nobody. And that constitution was given to Obasanjo at the day of inauguration. It was not debated. Nobody knew the content of that uh, uh, constitution. And today we are seeing the problem. The problem is that if a minister, if a governor build a road for you, you go and drum and play and dance. Because it, it wouldn't do him anything if he didn't break, uh, build anything for you. So if, uh, if uh, the president is coming to commission uh, something for you, which is our money, our commonwealth, Nigerians line up to drum as, 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 as if something is wrong with us. What are you drumming? This is what they are supposed to do. So I think the problem we have is that that constitution has a very fundamental problem. And until we bring it down, we will not be able to move forward. And of course, that constitution is going to consume us soon. Look at it in the creation of states. Look at before, we have four, four regions. And all four regions were equal matched. Today, when you talk about divisions now, we have three, the West, the East, and the North. The North alone has more than enough to, to, to deal with even the South and the West combined together. On what basis? Who negotiated that kind of uh, format? Who negotiated that idea of party and notion of that? So the whole thing is not right. And okay. uh, I think we need to do something about it. And the earlier, the better. Otherwise, I'm telling you, we we'll wake up one day and this country will not, will not be there. Well, we, I don't think we want that. But let me go to our next guest. It, it's interesting where the doctor left off. It, he's talking about the fact that our constitution is a problem. But I'd like to take you back to the national conference that held, and this is not the first, by the way. We've had constitutional conferences and we've had similar, you know, um, confabs. But the, 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 the one I'm referring to is the one that was done under the Jonathan administration, where a lot of, a lot of recommendations were put forward. I know it's gathering dust somewhere, just as he said, the, the, the issue on restructuring by the APC uh, as presented by Governor El Rufai is also somewhere gathering dust. Now, I, want to, I know that you're not a government person, but I'm, I'm trying to understand here. Why do you think that we spend so much taxpayers' monies to have these tea parties and these so-called conferences, and then at the end of the day, these papers are gathering dust, but then when it's close to election season, uh, most of these same politicians who may have uh, occupied office at one time or the other and want to run again begin to lax, uh, wax lyrical about this issue of restructuring. What exactly is our problem? Well, our problem is uh, insincerity. Um, many of these things are put together. They are just jamborees. It is to serve the interests of some people. They are very cosmetic. They are things that we don't think through. In the first instance, when John... Yeah, um, the former minister uh, was, I mean, tells you that there may be crises if we don't restructure. And then you ask yourself, what exactly are we restructuring? Um, is it, you know, just to satisfy the political ego of some people and drum things into their ears that makes them sound as if, you know, they are speaking something that deals with the interests of the people? Or just, you know, the jamborees they had in the past. I mean, in the first instance, they come from who elected them there. They were all selected. I mean, for you to do a national conference, the people must have elected you there to go and represent them and speak their minds. So they were not elected. You don't even have a national... I mean, you have a national assembly. And the question you're asking yourself is, why do you want... You know, these are elected officials that went to the national assembly. You know, in the first instance, whether they were now at their primary level, they were selected and whatever manner, how they got in there. But these were people that were supposedly elected. So why do you have... Why do you need a selected few, about 500 people, to do what exactly we sent those other ones that are in the National Assembly are receiving millions of naira of taxpayers' money and they are not done. That is the number one. Number two, what exactly are we restructuring? Are we meant to restructure our minds or to restructure, you know, the political interests of, of some, some other people? Let me ask you, you know, just restructuring. Part of the essence of restructuring is to devolve, you know, to devolve power to, to the states and the local governments, Right. Okay, let me ask you, how many state governors right now are allowing their local government chairman to 
to, to even, you know, to function as a third tier of government. Oh, that's that a whole is kettle of fish on its own. That's a whole conversation on its own. You understand? So that is where restructuring should start. Restructuring should begin with all of us. And I will explain. All the governors, they get their allocations. Local government chairmen are meant to generate, you know, revenues and all of these people. And let me tell you, the, everybody will tell you devolve power. What, what power are you devolving? Where on the concurrent list of government, the concurrent list of government, where the state and the, and the federal, they, they both, you know, have, you know, rights to legislate and all that. You legislate on housing. How many of these state governors are providing housing for their people? That is the question, number one. And they are getting taxpayers' money. They are spending them on what they call security boards and all fictitious things they are spending on. And they will come and tell you restructuring. They are the same people who are sending different groups to go and be championing restructuring. Well, they have not even begun restructuring from their homes. That is number one on housing. Number two is agriculture. Who has stopped them from, you know, using agri to transform the economy of their states? Has anybody actually stopped them from doing that? Number three. Uh, well, talk well, about can, can I just come in there? What is, then talk about education. Yeah, but, but in terms of agriculture, list. I'm not holding brief for the, for the government of the states, but... If yes, there has yes. been an easy way out of going cap in hand to the federal government at the end of the month, um, you know, to, to, to get allocation, why, do they why need would to we get be looking at agriculture, easy money? Agriculture. I mean, agriculture is as basic as it is. You have the land, I mean, you have the land with you. You can, you can, you can, you can take people out of poverty with agriculture. How much are they investing? Let every state governor come out and tell us how much they have invested in agriculture. Tell us how much they invested in education. These are issues on the concurrent list. They don't need any devolution of power. I mean, I, I just mentioned housing. I mentioned education. I mentioned the health. I mentioned roads. I, so these are all, all and the agriculture, five items. These are major, major issues that if they focus on, they will transform each state and local government without even going up in hand to the federal government. So, when you hear people speak about restructuring, they are bamboozling the people who don't, maybe the susceptible minds, the gullible ones, the vulnerable ones, who don't know exactly how to demand good governance from their people. Every governor, every governor right now, I don't, don't mind in the state, every governor are just simply looting, looting their people crazy and doing nothing. So they should stop talking about restructuring. Restructuring begin by Oh, I think we're having issues with your connection. So I'm going to go back to Dr. Um, Maduka. He's made very interesting, um, you know, points about, um, you know, issues that need to be addressed and the fact that this is just a lip service of sorts. What do we do to get it to happen? Because election is here um, and we're going to hear more of this. It's going to sound like they're going to start sounding like broken records. I, I was talking about it yesterday. Um, somebody, someone put a thread on uh, Instagram of different politicians captured. One was Frank Akara, another, you know, was, I think the transportation minister was braiding hair, you know. This was their way of getting to the people because they want our vote. It's about to happen again. What do we do to get these things that they throw around to actually become something if we're really interested in changing Nigeria? Because we can't just keep saying that our leaders are not doing what they promised us. What about our role in making sure that these demands are met? Dr. Madoka. Well, yeah, you, you will have uh, your demand to be met if you have the, the playing ground. As of today, our leaders have improvised people. Poverty has shown everybody a lot of things. You know, uh, somebody who is hungry, we always look for something to eat first before you talk about. It. So our uh, leaders they use uh, poverty to give people that kind of mindset of nobody, you know. And uh, like you said, most of all these are political uh, allies. Uh, they are benefiting from the disjointed uh, construction of this country. So it's going to be very hard for them to change the narrative. It's very going you know, to be very hard, and like uh, the other man talked about the states. Yeah, the state has their role. The state they have their role, but my problem about the states, like Lagos State, cannot generate light without first of all asking the federal government. 
And you know, light is, power is very important if you want to develop. The, the state governments cannot do certain things without, first of all, getting approval from the federal government. Let me give you an instance. I did a paper on the wastage of uh, coal in Enugu. Coal in Enugu, coal is one of the main source of income to South Africa. Why is coal dominant in Enugu? Why do we get to say because of oil? And of course, when I was asking one of the executives there, they said you can't do anything without first of all getting approval from a book. So these are the devotion of our power we're talking about. The state should be able to have freedom to do what they want to do. That's what is obtainable elsewhere. But, but, but then the states cannot do whatever they want to do because our constitution is somewhat limited um, that is you what, know, us that, to that a, federal, my, a federal system of government of sorts, even that, though we're running... No, 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 no. I, I disagree with you. The federal system of government gives room for states to be to be autonomous. Because if you look at the at the, author, the constitution we are using, or the federal federated unit we are using, it's the same in America. Every American state is almost like it, autonomous. Yeah, but they in reality, have, have we're right. running a unitary government, so that's that's the situation of things. But it's, it's only supposed to be, and that's why I think that man said that we need to demand. We need to demand accountability from each and every one of our leaders. How do leaders. we go about demanding course, this accountability? How? How? Because I want solutions. For instance, like let me just give an instance. I come from Abia. How many times have I heard about my Abia state giving me all the projects expenditure and the income expenditure as per a month. Don't do that. We are supposed to be seeing this thing so that you can be able to track what and what they've been able to do with the money they got from Abuja. Let me put it that way. What have they been able to do with the money they got from IGR, internal revenue, internal generated revenue? But as of today, everything is like uh, nothing is happening. Like he said, hey, they are just looting right and and of course, you know, election is just around the corner. So this is the time for them to mop up money. For instance, what are you talking about? A security vote. A governor can just decide to take one billion naira as a security vote, and nobody talks about it. So this is the issue, and that's why I was changing on that constitution. I'm not, okay. I'm not a pessimist, but the issue is that the constitution, when you have a foundation that is strong, there's nothing else you can do. Build the base of this uh, high scrapers. It will collapse around what happened in. Uh, uh, recently, because the foundation is wrong. So, okay. but it's the earlier the better. If we can be able to come back and say, what is it that we need to do? Then let's see how we can at least amend the All whatever right. we can. All right, let me quickly go to, to Dakwa forward. because yeah. we're almost out of time. Mr. Damola, quickly, I want solutions. We've seen how the push and shove from Nigerians, whether it's online, offline, whether we went to protest, whether people were arrested and shoved into Black Maria's, we've seen what has come out of it and the reports from the um, you know, panel that sat in Lagos. Nigerians are still hoping that something will come out of it. But how, aside from that, how do we also use this same tactics or something different to get our leaders to be more, more accountable to us if they've ever been accountable to us in any way? Well, in the first instance, let me tell you what the major challenges in, on the political scene in Nigeria. Our, our politics is uh, driven by brigandage and thuggery. Go to almost every, every, every state in this, in this country. You have an army of, you know, thugs, an army of, you know, um, call, them, call them whatever, you know, violent men who have been sponsored by these politicians, who even when you rise up to even say a word, you become a target. You know, that's why you can see even at Beirut's. In Lagos, here yeah, generating over how many billions of naira because they have the latitude to do so. You know, so it tells you that you know, and go everywhere. They are everywhere. You know, so what I'm saying invariably is that the nature of politics we play is not allowing for critical participation. People who should drive the process are intelligentsias, are people who have clear mind as to how to move the country forward. But the people we have. You know, our elements who are even far more powerful than those who are in the National Assembly. As we speak today, you yourself, you can recollect how some, how some thugs ran into the National Assembly, hijacked the, the, the mace of the Assembly, and today, nothing has been done. We can go on and on about many things that have happened. We have the president in this country who, who did all sorts, you know, and shared Ghana must go, 
And, you know, uh, many of these political talks in Ibado and all these places were mobilized to do all sorts. Mm. So all, all I'm saying is, is that a picture of gloom? Let me just end Quickly, on, because on we're out of this. time. We're out of for, time. For me, yeah, for me, you, you have five critical sectors that are within the powers of the states to transform the fortunes of their people. I have mentioned housing. I have mentioned health. I have mentioned agriculture. And I have mentioned road. And I mentioned education. Okay. Let the state governors, they don't need to, you don't need, you don't need to ask for any restructuring yet. Okay. I have said two things. These okay. five critical sectors, go and look at all the roads in Lagos. How many of the roads are fixed in Lagos? How many of the inner roads are fixed in Ibadan? How many well, of the inner roads are fixed in Ondo? Let we them go and fix their roads first. We have to and go. And be able for the people who are generating the tax. Let them go and build houses for them. Make the, make the hospitals functional in their states. All make right. the, you know, housing affordable in their states. We make local government chairman a proper third-tier arm of government. Okay. Stop wasting our time on restructuring and fix these ones that are on the concurrent list that okay. you don't need to go to court or anything to do. Stop mm -hmm. bamboozling the vulnerable and the susceptible in the society. Give I us good, good, good governance. I can and tell from the passion will be in your a thing voice. Of the past. I can tell from the passion in your voice that you're sick and tired of this banter uh, of restructuring. But Dakwada Amola, Sonny Maduka, thank you very much for being part of the conversation. Hey, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. My pleasure. All right. Mm. And I want to thank you all for staying with us and being part of the conversation. I am Mary Anna Cohn. We'll leave you with this Vox Pop. Where's Nigerians reacting to the reports released by the Lagos State NSAS Judicial Panel. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>